On behalf of the Hawaii Judiciary, I want, I want to extend our heartfelt sympathy to Senator Inouye's wife, Irene, his son, Ken, and the other members of his family. The Senator was an American hero, but he was also a beloved husband, father, grandfather, and friend. And we share your grief and share in your grief at this great loss. And thank you so much for this opportunity to share a few thoughts about him tonight. There are two ideals that are at the bedrock of American democracy, equality and justice. We enshrine them in our founding documents and we inscribe them above the entrances to our most important public buildings. But making those ideals a reality for all of our citizens takes hard work. It takes people of integrity and courage who are willing to stand up for what's right, speak out when something isn't fair, and make sure that the voices of those without power are heard. And that was Senator Inouye. As influential as he became in Washington, D.C., he always stayed true to his roots in Hawaii and always looked out for the little guy. He advocated tirelessly for equality and justice for all, for people as diverse as Filipino war veterans, members of the LGBT community, Japanese Americans interned during World War II, and Native Hawaiians. He supported our justice system in Hawaii in many different ways, but had a particular commitment to programs that sought to heal wounds and help people move forward. He was also a great teacher who cared genuinely about people. After I became Chief Justice in 2010, I asked the Senator if I could visit him in his office here in Honolulu, and he graciously agreed. We talked for a while about his service in the territorial legislature and Congress, and I realized that through the stories he shared with me, he was also sharing his wisdom about the challenges of public service. For me, as a new Chief Justice who was trying to find my bearings in public life, it was a chicken skin experience. He told me about one particularly tough test that he faced when he was in the territorial legislature when he had to decide whether to vote to end the death penalty. After studying the issue, he voted to abolish it because he concluded that it had been applied unequally to minorities and the poor. I'm sure that that was a politically risky position to take back in the 1950s, but he did what he believed was right. And he never stopped doing so throughout his lifetime of public service. Senator Inouye was one of the greatest members of the greatest generation, and his passing leaves a void in the fabric of our state and our nation, which can never be replaced. But the lessons he taught us and the example he set will endure. Do what's right. Don't forget your roots and speak up for those who don't have a voice. I'd like to conclude by recounting a story that a close friend shared with me about the senator. Her husband was working as a busboy in a Waik Waikiki hotel many years ago, and the senator, who was in a white suit, was having dinner. You can probably guess where this story is going. My friend's husband spilled red wine on the senator's white suit. You could tell a lot about a person by how they first react in a situation like that, and that was the case here. The senator smiled and said simply, don't worry, it's okay. I'm sure if the senator was here tonight, that's what he would tell us. Don't worry, it's okay. Thank you, Senator, for your service to our nation and to the people of Hawaii. Aloha.